Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over a lot of things that you're gonna wanna know if you're moving from California to Gilbert, Arizona. Let's get right into it. Hey, if this is your first time to this channel and you wanna learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, and play here in Gilbert and the greater Phoenix area, make sure you click that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified every time we put out a new video. And honestly, as a real estate broker here in Arizona, what I love even more than making these videos is when the phone rings, I get a text message, I get an email, and the first thing I hear is, hey Dave, I've been watching you on YouTube, we're thinking about moving to Gilbert, can you help us? So, if you're even thinking about moving or relocating here to Gilbert or the greater Phoenix area, pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us an email, send a text message, days, nights, weekends. We've got your back when moving here to Gilbert and the greater Phoenix area. All right, so we're gonna jump right into climate. Arizona, especially we're talking the Phoenix Metro. We're not talking about the mountains up north in Flagstaff or Sedona or uh, you know Prescott, or we're not talking about down in Tucson in the south either. We're talking about the Phoenix metro area, the, the center of the state, central Arizona. Now the climate here, we are definitely in a desert. We have you know mild to warm winters and summers, which you know June, July, August especially, it can get extremely hot here. Now a big difference that you might notice or not know, coming from most parts of California, where you're gonna have a more Mediterranean, maybe a little bit more humidity environment, more mild throughout, you know, your, your summers aren't as hot, your winters don't get much cold unless, you know, you're up in the Sierra Nevadas, so, you know, those areas, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. But you're gonna notice a lot drier environment here. Now, for a lot of people who have allergies or other sinus issues, having that consistently dry weather definitely heal, you know, clears that up for a lot of people, which is really nice. A couple of negatives though, you have drier skin. We have over 300 days of sunshine a year here, which is similar, if not more than what you'd experience in most parts of California. So you're gonna definitely want and appreciate, you know, putting your sunscreen on or enjoying shade more often than not. Um, a lot of people, especially over your swimming pools, things like that. We'll have shade sales. You know, you wanna set that up to make sure that living here is gonna be comfortable. We have a lot of resources and people we can direct you to for those kinds of things. Now, a lot of people mistakenly believe that it never rains here. Well, while we are in a desert, we do get rain, something like 30 some odd days a year. The majority of that comes during what's called the monsoon season. Monsoon season typically is during the summer months. So you might have June, July, August, maybe even into September a little bit. Now, a monsoon is uh, basically a large storm, you got wind, uh, sometimes there's sand, good thunderstorms, but usually what it's packed with is torrential downpouring rain. Now, one thing that's super interesting about that is while it is dry most of the time, throughout the majority of the neighborhoods in the area, you're gonna see little pocket parks that have a lower elevation in them with the playgrounds and things like that. When we get these huge storms, in order to prevent you know, flash flooding, these parks actually act as water catch basins. So all the water in the streets so these neighborhoods will get captured there. One time in my own neighborhood, we had a really big storm. The streets were just flooded. Water was going into the, uh, you know, the sewer drains or storm drains. And you know, that playground was under about four or five feet of water for the next two days while it seeped back in the ground. So yes, it does rain in Arizona. Yes, they do have some really awesome engineering and systems to main, you know, manage that. Definitely during those times, you're gonna wanna have your pool equipment, your chairs, your umbrellas all stored and put away. Uh, otherwise, it might end up two or three doors down during those storms, but pretty small part of the year to enjoy, you know, nine, 10 months of the year where it's just absolutely gorgeous. So the cooling systems, I don't know that you can even, it's probably illegal to live here without an air conditioner, seriously. So um, compared to some parts of California where you might get away with not having air conditioning, I know for some of my family back up in the Seattle area, uh, a lot of their homes don't have air conditioning at all. They just, you know, suffer through the three or four weeks of the year where you kind of wish you had it type of thing. But here in Arizona, you're definitely gonna want to, you know, when you're buying a home, we're definitely gonna wanna make sure the AC is updated. Has it been serviced? Is it maintained? Um, it's a critical piece of infrastructure for your home. Uh, if it's an older unit, you're gonna wanna definitely try to get the seller to replace that. Or if we're back into a multiple offer situation like we have been in recent years and continue to do so even now in 2023, yeah, you're gonna definitely wanna budget for the fact that that's probably gonna have to get replaced. Now, the good news is there's a lot of AC companies in the area and the really good reputable ones will have like membership plans where you can sign up and they'll come out every six months 
inspect, update, do anything that needs to be done. Uh, the last thing that you want to have on your hands is a hot spell in the middle of July where it's 10, 15 days straight of over 110 degrees and then your AC goes out. Not a good thing. So those are some things that you're going to want to think about and consider. The summer months, especially if you're not a snowbird and you're coming here to live year-round full-time, you got to have your AC, you got to get a professional mister system on your back patio that drops the temperature down significantly as well so you can still enjoy being outdoors even in these temperatures um, but yeah love to talk you you know walk you through more of that if you have questions now if you're an outdoor enthusiast and you love going to the beaches and that's what you've been used to in california there is no shortage of outdoor activities here either like we have the best weather most of the year um, but it's going to be a lot more hiking desert you know mountain hikes many many options we have um, there's a facebook group i can you know comment below and i'll i'll share it with you but there's a facebook group full of avid hikers that find all these waterfalls and all these secret little spots so there's a lot to do here like there's literally no shortage of outdoor hiking and um, ways to get out and enjoy you know the outdoors so long story short the move from california to arizona is definitely going to be a little bit different but the reality is the vast majority of people that move here absolutely love this weather it's dry it's clean it's everything that people really want and look for, which is why people just keep on coming here. So while there are some changes you might have to get used to, uh, it really, I don't think is that different. Although I've never lived in California, I've just been visiting and you know tourism type stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people from California really do love it here when, when they arrive. So let's talk about the cost of living for a little bit. Uh, housing primarily is a big, big one for a lot of the people I talk to that move here from California, especially uh, young professionals that I've talked to. They say, well, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be able to become a homeowner in the Bay Area or in Los Angeles or San Diego, it's impossible for me to get my foot in the door on something because even the cheapest houses are way above what I can afford. I'm never going to get in and never going to be able to build equity. That's something I've been hearing a lot. And so, you know, depending on what part of California you're coming from, prices will vary drastically. But if you're coming from a lot of the popular areas, we're talking LA County, Orange County, San Diego County, uh, and, and the Bay Area, which is most of the people I've talked to in recent months and years, you know, the average price in those areas the median is probably Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I'm guessing seven, eight hundred thousand dollars for you know the most basic you know home. Whereas here, you can get you know for seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, which is well above the median price, by the way. You can get you know a four bedroom home with an office and a three car garage and a large backyard with a swimming pool. I mean that's not new construction, but those kinds of homes exist here. Now the median price I think is around five hundred thousand in Gilbert. So your dollar stretches way farther here, way more affordable. And on that note, property tax is too. Obviously, I don't know the details of property taxes throughout California. I just know that they're significantly higher. Here in Arizona, you're going to find drastically lower property taxes, you know, even for an equal priced home. Uh, they're just they're just very much lower than what people are used to coming from, you know, pretty much anywhere on the West Coast, whether it's Washington State, Oregon, most of California. Uh, that's one of the first things that people notice is that, you know, their $700,000 home, their property tax bill is like a third of what they paid on their old home that they moved from. So good news, it's way more affordable to live here. Dollars stretch a lot farther. So utilities and services. Let's just talk about electricity first of all, especially because we have the summertime and a large usage of electric power for AC units. One thing about the Phoenix area, there doesn't seem to be much of a shortage if at all of electric power. Uh, we've got, you know, water dams for um, from SRP and, and well, Salt River Project in different areas. So we have a lot of hydroelectric power. But the big one that even people in Phoenix don't know about is far west of Phoenix is North America's largest nuclear power plant, the Palo Verde uh, Generating Station. It's, I believe it runs year round, of course, but during the summer months, they're able to crank that up and they generate an immense amount of electric power to supply all the air conditioning units. So. I've heard stories, I don't know if they're exaggerated or not, but I've heard stories that in a lot of parts of California, they're urging people to charge their electric cars and Teslas at night. Never heard any of those kinds of conversations here. I mean, there are certain hours with certain power bills where you can get cheaper power from three to six or four to seven, but generally speaking, the concept of having to spread power out to avoid black or brownouts or whatever, not really a thing here. So as far as food, Grocery stores, I mean, I'd say they're pretty comparable. Um, it might be a little less expensive here to going to the grocery store compared to California. Um, both are, you know, compared to, you know, 
considering what you're talking about, where you're coming from, they're both, you know, expensive. Uh, dining out though, I think when you go out to eat at restaurants here in Gilbert and the greater Phoenix in area in general, you're gonna find it's a lot more affordable. I'm not exactly sure how that plays into it or why, but the reality is you can go out to eat all the time here, try out different restaurants, hole in the walls, really nice fine dining. Uh, we've got obviously an, uh, an abundance of Native American casinos, which have really nice dining options in there. So if you wanna go out and you know gamble and play, and there's a lot of options. And the reality is overall, compared to what an equal service might be in like LA or Orange County or San Diego, or especially in you know the Bay Area, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with what Gilbert and the greater Phoenix area has to offer as far as quality of food, service, dining, and the price you're gonna pay, so that's a definite plus. All right, so while living in Gilbert, compared to most areas of California, you're definitely gonna stretch your dollar a lot further. There's obviously a lot of other considerations to take into account, like, you know, lifestyle, jobs, you know, proximity to your friends and family. Maybe all your family's moving over here. I mean, I've literally, uh, I've worked with a family where they sold three different homes in California and bought three different homes here, all in the same neighborhood. So literally that is a thing that people have done. You're definitely gonna wanna look into, you know, if, you, if you're not retired and you're still working and looking at that, whether you work from home or you're in a certain industry that is well supported here, especially if you're in the semiconductor industry or related to it, financial services, you know, engineering, Chandler, the, the, the Gilbert Burton Chandler area definitely has a ton of that and I've got some other videos that will walk you through some of those things or simply put just give me a call shoot me an email send a text message I can kind of give you a private one-on-one -on -one zoom call where we can talk about what is going on out here and how can you move you and your job and your family and everybody else that you want to bring out here to here it's been done many times by many people before you so it's definitely possible all right so let's talk a little bit more in depth about the housing as a real estate broker this is what I do for a living obviously I love educating and showing people around the areas and things like that but when it's getting the nitty gritty about the homes itself. So uh, as we already kind of alluded to or mentioned, yeah, the average median price point of a home in Gilbert, you're looking around five, a little over 500. Uh, whereas in California, I think it's as a state, I think it's around 700. Obviously, it's gonna be a lot higher in some of the other cities and areas that we're seeing a lot of people come here from. So a good friend of mine just left uh, San Jose. He had a million one hundred thousand dollar house, which he can. I mean, it's very entry level, basic home. That same house would probably be around six, seven hundred thousand dollars here, maybe a little less, I don't know. But long story short, you're gonna have a lot more stretching your budget. Now, there's gonna be a lot of different options for properties. Um, Gilbert, in the past, was a very strong farming community and senses large developments. So you're gonna have a lot of single family homes with really nice master planned communities. You know, you get amenities and parks and things to do for the kids. You're talking splash pads and swimming pools you know, private parks, things that you can do right within your neighborhood where the kids can go ride bicycles and literally just be safe and not have to worry about it. So that's a big thing that you're gonna see here in Gilbert are these large single family home neighborhoods. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more manageable, less, you know, cleaning, less square footage maybe even, you know, there are townhouses, um, not so much your larger condos and we're not talking like downtown cities, so you're not gonna see a lot of that, but single family homes and town homes are definitely available. One thing that is really a hugely attractive part of living here is new construction. So as Gilbert continues to grow and get built out, there's a huge number of you know new construction options to choose from. In a separate video, I recently toured uh, the top seven new construction communities. So you can kind of tour around with that video or give me a call, we can tour around in person and I can show you some other smaller options too. I touched on seven of the biggest, most popular ones, but there are definitely others available here in Gilbert that you can look at as well. So a thing that people actually you know want to think about is the investment potential. So am I moving to a place or buying a home in a place that's gonna continue to grow? If I buy a home in Gilbert, can I realistically expect it to grow in value while I live there and work there so that someday, you know, if I decide to move or retire or, you know, upgrade or whatever. Thing is, is the economy here just keeps on growing. Semiconductor industries, there's a whole bunch of really uh, attractive industries um, that are, you know, set up here and continue to grow and attract more and more people. Uh, the reality is uh, there aren't enough homes available for the number of people that keep moving here. And the type of people who keep moving here are typically higher income, you know, more affluent affluent uh, people that want to take advantage of a really good thing. So yeah, the investment potential, you know, nobody can tell you for sure that things are going to be better in the future than they are today. But you know, short of another major pandemic or some other, you know, black swan event that nobody can really predict, there's not a lot of evidence that anything's gonna slow down anytime in the near future. All right, so if you're thinking that uh, you wanna move here and you're gonna have to find a new job, good news is we've got 
a wide variety of very attractive industries. In my opinion, maybe I just like it so much, but I'd say the flagship major industry that uh, really powers this area is advanced you know, manufacturing. We're talking you know, spacecraft, and, and this is not just for Gilbert specifically, but even the surrounding communities. You know, you got Chandler going down into East Mesa Airport, and you got the other airport, Falcon Field in Mesa. There's a lot of advanced engineering, aerospace, you know, automotive engineering. There's a lot of these high-tech manufacturing related type companies and roles and positions that exist here and it just keeps on growing and of course this creates a lot of jobs in engineering production logistics lots of these types of positions are here and are here to stay you know the tech industry has actually been expanding here as well um, I'm sure for a variety of reasons I'm no expert on you know Silicon Valley but the gist of it is Silicon Valley you know there's not really anywhere else to build a lot of new home. So if you're a company based there, you either have to pay your employees an exorbitant amount of money for them to afford to live there, or if you're expanding and growing, which, where do you want to expand to? So people are bringing their companies down here to Gilbert and the Chandler area. So we're talking software companies, cybersecurity and data analysis, GoDaddy, for example, a large, you know, everyone knows GoDaddy, the large registrar company. They're based here in this area and Northrop Grumman and other uh, large government contractors. Um, they have a very large presence in the area. So there's really no shortage of these types of Positions. My next door neighbor, he's a retired engineer. I think he worked for Motorola, which later became somehow he ended up at Boston Dynamics or like a, a, an offshoot of them. But as he says, there are all those large, you know, those office buildings in Chandler and Gilbert, a lot of cool stuff behind the walls that the majority of people will never get to see. I'm a little jealous. I like tech. I like seeing that kind of stuff. But that just kind of paints the picture of the kinds of things that are going on in the area, whether you're in this kind of a space or not. Hospitality industry is really big here. The restaurant scene is big and growing. You know, with so many affluent, high level employees earning really high wages in the area, there's also a really nice, you know, scene of like farmers markets and restaurants and hospitality and entertainment options and water parks and hotels, all that stuff, including sports and baseball and everything else that you got going on. Pretty vibrant community that seems like it's got a lot going for it. And there's a lot of really smart people behind the scenes that have been, you know, planning and building out the city the way it is for a long, long time. And, you know, some good visionaries that have laid the groundwork for, you know, what is becoming a very comfortable place to live. Now, if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking about coming out here to bring your business or your ideas with you, there's a lot of flex space offices as well. So, I mean, you've got your, you know, more traditional Regis offices. You've got WeWork you know, Tempe on the on the waterfront, which is between here and the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. Also, you know, known for a lot of that type of stuff. But the reality is it's very, very strong community of entrepreneurs, people trying out new things, doing stuff. It has a really good vibe and environment and supportive infrastructure you know, for your entrepreneurs who are, you know, wanting to get something started and to grow. So when it comes to education, especially for the children, uh, the school system here is quite different than what most people have experienced in other areas. So you get your public school system, which is, I think, pretty similar to what you would experience or expect in, you know, California, Oregon, Washington, and other areas. You know, they have school buses and things like that. Um, you know, everyone's welcome, you can get in. But a big thing that surprised me, and I'm still learning about as um, my kids get older and get into school. I have babies right now, but we also have what's called a charter school program. So especially here in the Gilbert Chandler area, charter schools are a really big deal. And they're basically semi-private schools where you have to apply to get in. There's usually a waiting list, um, but they're, they're publicly funded. So basically, if you want to send your children to one of the numerous different charter schools in the area, uh, they don't provide busing typically, but you know, you can pick and choose the types of, you know, education that you want for your children, you know, and ultimately that's going to be a personal decision and there is a variety of different ideas and politics, of course, behind all of that. But the cool thing is, um, if there is a certain particular type of charter school that you think meets, you know, matches your values and your desires and your goals for you and your children and your family, you can definitely apply there and it's paid for with public dollars. So that's where the, you know, politics come in. For every child that goes to a charter school, that's less money available for the public schools. I'm not gonna get in the politics of it and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I know it's definitely different. Uh, and I know a lot of people typically, um, tend to like it. I mean, there, there are waiting lists for a lot of these schools. When it comes to, you know, pr more private education, there are your traditional private schools. Uh, typically, these are mostly religious focused. So if that's important to you, um, I can help you do some research or, you know, a simple Google search to figure out what 
you know, schools and which religious affiliations are available for that would probably be the best way to, for you to, to get that information you're looking for. All right, so when it comes to higher education, Gilbert doesn't have any, let's say, there's no university for sure. There's, you know, some smaller colleges, but uh, Arizona State University, not very far to drive away. That's over in Tempe. Uh, we're talking 20, 30 minutes max, depending on where in Gilbert you're thinking about living. So if you have children or you yourself are thinking about, you know, you're advancing your, your education uh, and you wanna live in Gilbert, definitely Arizona State's not a far drive if you wanna make that short commute. So just like in California, one of the things I really love about Arizona, of course, is with the weather, you know, especially during this, the typical school year, uh, sports is huge here. We have so many student athletes and really good programs that people are backing and into. I personally, I referee uh, uh, for the uh, Arizona Interscholastic Association. I'm a, re a wrestling official. So I get to be involved with a lot of the kids from that perspective, um, from the officials perspective, you know, seeing the different schools and facilities, getting to interact with different coaches. You know, you start to reckon over the years, you start to recognize kids when they start off as, you know, seventh and eighth graders and going through high school. Some of them definitely stand out and you get to, you know, watch their student athlete careers progress, which is super cool. But big picture though, whether it's a indoor, you know, in the gym as a wrestling mat, where we're talking football or baseball, there is a massive amount of resources and support in these areas for children who want to be involved in sports. So even if you are a charter school uh, parent or, you know, private school, there, you know, there's, there's all kinds of outdoor recreation and, and things to do. It's, it's definitely one of, I'd say the pillars of living here is the fact that we have so much access to really great facilities and sports and being outdoors and having all of the things that really help embrace why living here is so great. All right, and while we're talking about outdoor activities, let's kind of talk about it from, you know, the adult's perspective. There's so many things to do here. I'm actually, I wrote a few of them down. The Riparian Preserve um, is here in Gilbert. It's basically a large uh, multiple pond system where there's fish and birds and wildlife and there's a nice walking paths around. So that's a really cool thing to check out. Freestone Park, which has um, been around for a little while. It's in North Gilbert. They've got a huge huge indoor rock climbing wall, which is great for the summer months when you don't really want to be outside, but they've got baseball fields, they've got a pond, they've got large hiking and outdoor, or hiking, uh, walking trails outside. Tons of things to do there. If you want to take a little bit of a drive, um, just south of Gilbert, you know, we've got the Santan Mountain Regional Park, uh, definitely one of my favorites. Saturdays, this isn't so much being like exercise related, but uh, downtown Gilbert, they have the farmer's market every Saturday. This is year round. Of course, in the summer months, you're going to want to look at their website and look at the schedule. It's a lot earlier in the day because the heat does, um, you know, get you in that July, August period. You're going to want to be, you're basically going to want to be indoors, you know, by 10, 11 in the morning most days. But golf courses, oh my gosh, like there are so many golf courses here. And of course, the question I get, which you're welcome to comment below as well, is where does all the water come from? Well, you got to remember, this used to be a huge farming community. They brought in water from, you know, the Salt River. Um, uh, that's a whole other video I should probably make is where does all the water come from for this area? Because a lot of people are confused and they think that Lake Mead and the Colorado River are where all this water comes from. A big chunk of it does, like 30%, but that means that 70% of the water that we consume in the Phoenix area Area, comes from other places. You know, we got the Salt River, the Verde River, we got the Gila River, uh, all these different river systems that come in and there's dams and lakes up, you know, north. Um, anyway, we'll get, we'll get into that in another video. Uh, make sure you comment below if you want that video. I'll actually go back and, you know, let you know when that video posts specifically. So in Gilbert, especially along these canals that, you know, traditionally brought water to the farms, now it brings water to the, still for the farms, some of them, but also to the water treatment plants that treat the water and make it available for drinking water through all the houses. But along most of these canals and a few offshoot areas are some really well-maintained bicycle paths. Of course, there's also horses out there and things like that, but that is seriously one of my favorite things. You can go on your bicycle. I mean, there's nice crosswalks when you do have to, you know, cross over with cars and traffic, but you can just go and go and go. I mean, I'd have to look it up to see how many miles, but I mean, it's gotta be, I've never, I, there's so many of them. Check it out, you know, type in Gilbert bicycle paths, you'll find the map, it's, it's pretty extensive. Gilbert is definitely a dog friendly town. And I say town because it's technically the town of Gilbert. Although it is the size of a city with the resources of a city, you know, the political atmosphere and the, the community in general wants to maintain it as a town. Maybe if you know the difference between a town and a city and what actually defines the difference, you can comment below. But Gilbert really is more of like a, a city that used to be a farming community. And it's, you know, having a, we'll say a, an identity crisis a little bit. 
people who have been here a really, really long time do not recognize Gilbert as it is today. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, me personally, I didn't grow up here either, so I, I can't really say that one way is better than the other, but I personally love it, you know, and living here and all the things I get to do and enjoy. And talking about change and growth, you know, let's talk about a little bit about a cultural differences. So we're not very far from California. I mean, it's a five hour drive to San Diego and about a seven hour drive over to LA. You will find though that, especially in Gilbert, there's more of a conservative vibe. I'm not saying that it's a hardcore right wing psychos or whatever, right? But the reality is you're gonna find that it has a little bit more of a conservative vibe to it. Um, that's not to say that there aren't a lot of, you know, Democrat and liberal thinking people around, but you know, if you're coming from an area of California where it's hardcore liberal and whether you're for that or not um, is, is irrelevant, but you're gonna notice that in Gilbert, it's just a little bit different. I'm not saying most people don't find it comfortable or that you can't talk to your neighbors or engage in, you know, meaningful discussions about things, but that's a big thing that, you know, people definitely recognize and feel once they're here and going out and talking to people is that the political climate's a little different. You know, one of the things about Gilbert specifically is it does have, I'd say it's the definition of suburbia. I mean, it is safe, it's clean, it's mostly quiet. I mean, our main arterial roads, of course, they're gonna be busy with a lot of cars to get people from here to there, and we have the freeway loops, but once you're inside your neighborhood or you know, in a different you know, neighborhood in the area, yeah, it's, it's the definition of urban sprawl, but I kinda of take the word urban out because it doesn't have an urban feel. You're not in a large city environment where you know, sketchy things are going on or, you know, or you know, you've got the hustle and bustle. Like, as much as Gilbert has grown, they have definitely made an immense effort through planning and zoning and and everything that you know that the, the planners have done to keep this place feeling like a small town although there's so many people here and so many great neighborhoods to choose from you know you still get that small town vibe and feel there's community events and, and everything in, in the historic uh, Gilbert so you're gonna want to check that out or we can you know give you some information about it when we get together over a zoom call and on that note I'm gonna just mention real quick again if you are thinking about moving or relocating here to Gilbert seriously pick up the phone you know give us a call shoot us an email send us a quick text message just let us know your planning on coming out here, I'll send you a link to my calendar. You can meet with us. We can talk through kind of what your expectations are, what you'd like to do for fun, what kind of a lifestyle you're looking to live. Maybe Gilbert isn't right for you. And if that is the case, that's okay. We've got experts on our team that cover the entire Phoenix metro area, whether you're looking to be in a more rural, like suburban is one thing, or if you're looking for a more rural feel, you might want to consider uh, Maricopa uh, or Santan Valley. And we've got members of our team that can help advise, lead, and guide you on those areas. Areas. But yeah, give us a call, shoot us an email, send us a text message, and then let's get to the next thing. All right, so the ease of commuting and getting around. Now, like I said, I've been to California, most areas of the state from one period of time to another on vacation, and guys, your traffic sucks. I know you know that. I grew up in the Seattle area originally, and I know that traffic sucks bad too. Now here in Gilbert and the greater Phoenix area in general, the city planners and the state highway departments and everybody else that's involved have done a tremendous, and I mean that, tremendous job at designing the cities and the roads to accommodate all of the people that live here and continue to move here. Now, like I said, locals that have been here 20, 30 years, whatever, of course, they're gonna complain about all the new people coming, but the reality is the roads are handling the traffic we have. And what the cool thing is, because it's a grid system, if there's an accident or a road closure or construction or something going on, there's a million different ways that you can get from A to B. So if you're gonna go on Google Maps and zoom in, you'll see all of the one mile, you know, marks of all these different roads. Yeah, you can literally choose any direction you want and make your own route. So literally getting around is so easy. I can't tell you how much I love the fact that when I jump in my car, even if I run into a traffic stop or whatever, go around next one and you get there. So coming from a place personally where traffic was a big issue, I know how important that is and how much stress that comes off your shoulders when that's not something you deal with every day. So for those Gilbert residents who do commute, and usually commute basically means you're going from your neighborhood to, well, some people might commute further than others, but the average is about 28 minutes. So that's significantly below most major cities, I think in the country, but for sure in California. I remember when I worked in um, downtown Seattle for a short period, going north about 35 miles to Everett Marysville, um, that was like two hours to commute each way. You know, and if you go in the middle of the night on a Sunday at two in the morning, it might take you
take you, you know, 20, 35 minutes. So here, the commute can be pretty consistent. Unless there's a major catastrophic accident on the freeway, you can pretty much rely on the time for commuting every day. You're not gonna have, if maybe a small amount in certain spots, you're gonna see some congestion and a little bit of stop and go. Um, but they're already addressing some of that on the 202 loop on the south end of town, expanding that freeway, adding lanes. I'm telling you, like even with the growth that they have, like <laughs> traffic is not really a thing compared to other parts of the country that you and other people might be coming from. All right, so as a suburb of Phoenix, Gilbert in the East Valley is only about a 30 minute drive, depending on which part of Gilbert you live in, to the actual city of Phoenix. The city of Phoenix has Sky Harbor Airport, which is our main commercial airport, uh, as well as numerous museums and cultural events and things like that. So if Gilbert doesn't have enough for you, which there is a lot, not very far to just drive over there. Of course, you got Scottsdale right next to it. Um, Scottsdale can be anywhere from like a 30 to 45 minute drive, depending on which part of Scottsdale you're going to. Relatively speaking, super nice location. One of the things I love about Gilbert too is that everything feels brand new. A family member of mine, he came down a couple years ago and um, to tour the area when, you know, just so I could show him and he just could not believe coming from the Seattle area to here, he's like, it looks like everything was built in the last five years. I mean, while it's a little bit of an exaggeration, that's the feeling that everything is just new, clean, nice. There's a lot to be said for that. So one of the cool things I like personally about living um, here in Gilbert and the Gilbert area, we have quick access to two commercial airports. So the main one, of course, like I just mentioned, is over out in Phoenix. You got Sky Harbor Airport, but we do have the Mesa Gateway Airport, which back in the day used to be called Williams Field. It's a former uh, Air Force um, base that was later converted, I think in the 90s, to, you know, a commercial base today, but Allegiant Air and a number of other smaller airlines do fly in there. So if you want to commute back and forth to different places that Allegiant Air flies, they're, they're the primary biggest operator there. Um, you want to check out AllegiantAir.com to see what kinds of service they have, but being such a small airport and having these quick uh, routes, definitely it's nice to fly out of Mesa Gateway when you can, just because you don't have the congestion or size or scale of dealing with the primary Sky Harbor Airport over in Phoenix. Health Care in Gilbert. Now, they've got their bases covered, I'm telling you. I mean, multiple hospital networks. You've got dozens and dozens and dozens of inpatient, outpatient clinics, services, uh, you name it. I mean, I would be surprised if it doesn't exist in Gilbert. You know, depending on your insurance carrier, we got Banner Health, Dignity Health. And I know um, Phoenix Children's Hospital has like, uh, like a branch you know, uh, campus or office, you know, for specifically for, you know, children's hospital system. So yeah, there's definitely everything you could ever want in Gilbert when it comes to, you know, healthcare emergencies. Um, you know, the, the reality is they pretty much have their bases covered. And if it doesn't happen to be in Gilbert, check Chandler um, and, you know, otherwise Scottsdale, and Phoenix, but living in a large metropolitan area like this, and if you're in California coming from a similar large area, you're gonna find that all of those kinds of services that you ever needed or wanted, they're here. So guys, I wanted to just touch on a number of these things that a lot of people from California are thinking about or have asked me about. Um, if there's other questions that you have about what's it like to really like leave California and come here, just like so many other Californians before you, give me a call, shoot me an email, send me a text message, or you can comment below publicly if you want everyone else to read the comments under this video. Uh, otherwise, we're always happy to schedule a time to meet up uh, for 30 to 45 minutes, just kind of covering whatever questions and issues that you're having. And guys, until the next video, we'll catch you on the next one.